Most utilities are gonna offer an interconnection program. Um, typically it's a, a net metering you know, application. So the way it works is at the end of the project, um, the utility is actually gonna install a bi-directional meter. So as the customer systems produce power, if they're ever producing more power than their home's consuming, then their meter will actually go backwards. Most meters nowadays are digital, so it doesn't you know, spin like the old style, but if you look on there, it will actually start ticking left, um, which means their home's producing more than they're using. But with most utilities, it's pretty simple. It's net metering, um, net billing. So at the end of the month, they're gonna bill them on the difference. So, you know, if they, if their home produced more than they consumed that month, then at the end of the month, they're gonna have an excess amount of kilowatt hours. Most utilities are gonna give them a statement credit on that bill, albeit at a, you know, at a wholesale rate. So, you know, a lot of customers, they wanna oversize their system, but typically doesn't make sense because of the fact that most utilities are gonna give a wholesale rate for any overproduction. But the net metering's been huge for the renewable energy, uh, the renewable, uh, industry, excuse me. It allows customers to use their solar power basically at any time during that month, even at night, you know, when the sun's not out, because of the fact that they're at the end of the month, they're going to get billed on the difference. Parallel generation, basically customers are going to get a wholesale rate for any overproduction. So they're not going to have that net billing system where they're getting billed at the end of the month. They're going to get a wholesale rate for any production that they're putting on the grid. So Parallel generation is definitely not uh, as good of a program as a net metering, but there are some utilities who only offer parallel generation. There are some utilities um, that have a formula based on a historical usage from the customer. So Evergy, for instance, the last 12 months, they have a formula where they will actually cap the amount of solar that a, that a customer could net meter. So you have to keep that in mind. There's also some state limitations like in Kansas, there is a 15 kilowatt per account limit. So that's the big limit in Kansas. And then, like I said, utility by utility, there are some limitations based on different formulas based on a customer's usage. Yeah, so 15 kilowatt uh, size system is actually a pretty big residential system. When you look at our average over all of our installations, our average size residential solar system is about a 10 kilowatt. So even though Kansas does has that, have that 15 kilowatt cap, it's, that's 50% bigger than our average system. So for 90, you know, 90, 95% of customers, that's gonna be sufficient for what they need anyways. To truly be off the grid, um, a customer is gonna need a massive amount of battery power, which is not, you know, it's not a cheap thing to do. For 99.8% of customers, it's not, it's not a practical option. Uh, but it definitely can be done. But um, pretty much all the systems that we currently do are gonna be a grid-tied solar option. That way, in certain cases, you know, customers are gonna have the ability to pull power from your utility, you know, just like they do now.